Hi, in this video, I'll explain how to do a proof by contradiction and then show an example from linear algebra. First, let me show you how a proof by contradiction works. Suppose we need to prove that if P is true, then Q is true. Let's highlight the two parts so we can keep track. The given premise is P is true. The conclusion that we need to prove is Q is true. A proof by contradictions starts by supposing that the conclusion isn't true. Suppose Q is not true. Then we do math, sometimes a lot of math, to show that it leads to a result that's unacceptable. Since the result is unacceptable, the suppose not part must have been wrong, and therefore Q must be true. There are two ways for things to be unacceptable. Number one is that we get to something that contradicts the premise that P is true. We somehow arrive at a result that says P is false instead. Then we get our contradiction. That's where the name proof by contradiction comes from. Sometimes we don't get back to the premise, but rather we manage to move on to something else that's total nonsense. For example, we arrive at 0 equals 1. That's also unacceptable, and it also shows that the supposed not part must have been wrong, and therefore Q must be true. For this reason, this method of proof is also called proof by the absurd, in other languages such as Latin or Spanish or French. These are the steps of a proof by contradiction. First, you need to clearly identify to yourself what's the premise and what's the conclusion. Start the proof by saying, suppose not. This is obviously optional, but I highly recommend it. I had a professor who did that all the time and I thought it was beautiful because it signals to everybody that the proof will be by contradiction. Say, suppose not, and negate the conclusion. Then you do math to arrive at something that's unacceptable. Usually it means to contradict the premise, but also it may mean to arrive at something nonsense. Once you get there, you say the word contradiction, and you're done. Let me show you a simple example before moving on. Suppose we want to prove that if x is less than 0, then 2x is less than x. For clarity, I highlight to separate out the premise and the conclusion. The premise is x is less than 0. The conclusion is 2x less than x. Suppose not. Suppose 2x less than x is not true. That means 2x is greater than or equal to x. Now we want something unacceptable, maybe contradicting the assumption that x is less than 0. I'll need to go from 2x to x somehow. I know, I'll subtract x. Subtract x both sides. I get x greater than or equal to 0. This contradicts the premise. I have my contradiction. Now let's do linear algebra. Prove that if a finite set S of vectors is linearly independent, then any non-empty subset T of S is also linearly independent. This problem includes the technical term linearly independent, so it's a good idea to look at its definition. From the textbook by Edwards, Penny, and Calvis, the vectors V1, V2 to Vk in a vector space V are said to be linearly independent, provided that the equation c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus up to ck vk equals the zero vector, where the c's are scalar coefficients, has only the trivial solution c1 equals c2 equals up to ck equals zero. Another way to think of it is that the only way to zero out a linear combination of a set of linearly independent vectors is to make all the coefficients zero. The opposite of linearly independent is linearly dependent. 
If there is a non-trivial way to zero out their linear combination, then the vectors v1, v2 up to vk are said to be linearly dependent. That is, there exists a set of coefficients not all zero. Some may be zero, but there has to be some non-zero. Such that c1v1 plus c2v2 plus up to ckvk equals the zero vector. Now let's go back to our proof by contradiction. Let's first highlight the premise and the conclusion. The premise is that S is linearly independent. The conclusion is its subset T is also linearly independent. Proof. Start with saying suppose not. Suppose T is linearly dependent instead. Let's name the vectors in T as v1, v2 up to vk. Then there exists some coefficient c, not all zero, such that c1, v1 plus c2, v2 plus up to ck, vk equals the zero vector. At least one of the c's is non-zero. We want to lead to a contradiction. We probably want this to contradict the assumption that S is linearly independent. That means we need to know what the vectors in S are, right? The definition of S being linearly independent is about the vectors in S. So what are they? Well, remember T is a subset of S. That means all the vectors V in T are also vectors in S. Thus, S consists of all the Vs in T and some more outside of T. Let's call them u1, u2, up to uh. By the way, these u vectors may not exist. T is a subset of S, but it may not be a proper subset. It may be so big that it's actually as big as S. We'll see that it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect our proof. Let's get to the contradiction by looking at the set S now. Let u1 up to uh be the vectors in S that are not in T, if any. Then we're already told that c1v1 up to ckvk is equal to the zero vector. Let's expand this expression to all of S by including all the u vectors as well. But on the other hand, we also want to keep the total equal to zero. Because that's what linear independence and dependence are about. Let's add zero times u1 all the way. That will let in all the u vectors into our expression but still keep the total equal to zero. Do that and we get this. c1v1 plus c2v2 plus all the v's and then followed by 0u1 plus 0u2 plus all the way to 0uh, the whole thing equals 0. Here's our contradiction. This law expression is a linear combination of all the vectors in S, all the v's and all the u's not missing anyone. And we knew at least one of the c's is non-zero because of t. Thus, this is a non-trivial linear combination of all the vectors in S that equals zero, meaning S is linearly dependent. We got our contradiction. Therefore, the supposed not at the beginning must have been bad and T must be linearly independent. Okay, let's summarize what we did. We needed to prove that if a finite set S of vectors is linearly independent, then any non-empty subset T of S is also linearly independent. The premise is a finite set S of vectors is linearly independent. The conclusion is any non-empty subset T of S is also linearly independent. We started our proof by saying suppose not. Suppose T is linearly dependent. We did a bunch of math. We arrived at S is linearly dependent, contradicting the premise. Therefore, we conclude that the suppose not part must be wrong. T is linearly independent, QED.
Now let me show you a clean proof how this whole argument can be written down on paper. Part of the practice of doing a lot of proofs is that you learn to put what's in your head onto paper in a nice organized and concise manner. Note that it's customary that when you've arrived at the contradiction, you can just stop. You don't need to repeat the theorem. Alrighty, hope that's been helpful. Any questions, put them in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe for more contents. Thanks for watching. Bye.